So this lesson is going to be pretty straightforward. It's just like 11.1b when we talked about uh, angle measure equations. I think it was called, right? Something like that. What was it called? Oh, yeah, angle measure equation. So same kind of thing, except now we've got, we're dealing with the uh, parallel line angle relationships. So there's only two uh, things that we need to do. One for, uh, sorry, my brain's kind of not all there today, but we're going to try and get through this. Um, so when we have uh, alternate interior, interior, alternate exterior, corresponding or vertical if we have any one of those four angle relationships all we need to do is set both expressions equal to each other and solve for x let's write that down when we have this uh, we must set each exp uh, instead of each say set both sorry And solve for x. Sorry, my bad. So if we have one of those four types of angle relationships, all we need to do is set both expressions equal to each other and solve for x. Anyone know why we have to set these expressions equal to each other? What do all four of these angle relationships have in common? They're all congruent, right? But if we have same side interior angles, we got to do something different. We have to add both expressions together set that equal to 180 and solve for X It's almost kind of a uh, recap of 11.1b that we talked about because it's basically the same thing. We do one thing if we have congruent relationship. We do another thing if we have a supplementary relationship. Do an example. Let's draw some parallel lines with a transversal cutting through. It's 
something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's go ahead and say this top angle here is 6x plus 1. And this angle down here is going to be 7x minus 10. 7x minus 10. So there's our two expressions for that first example. So first we're going to answer, what relationship do we have? Right, are these alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, corresponding or vertical? Anyone want to take a guess? Yeah, Mason. Alternate exterior, alternate exterior that's right. Alternate, <laughs> bless you, exterior angles. So now we go look back up at our notes. Alternate exterior, oh, that's right here on the left side. That's a congruent relationship. So what are we gonna do? We'll set both expressions equal to each other and solve for x. Very straightforward. All we're gonna do is set 6x plus one equal to 7x minus 10, yeah. Yeah, 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 they're right up there on my desk, my bad. Go for it. Six x plus one equals seven x minus ten. So we set them equal to each other, and now we just have to solve for x by doing our inverse operations. We'll split the equal sign down the middle. And who can help me out? What do we want to do first here? Anybody got an idea of what we can do to solve for x? Theo. So remember, we want to bring all of our variable terms to one side of the equal sign and all of our constant terms over to the other side of the equal sign. Yeah. Very close. Instead of adding it, that's right, 6x is already positive, so we'll do the opposite of positive 6x, which is minus 6x. Is it these red parentheses that are confusing? Maybe? No? Okay. Those go away, we're left with one equals, what's seven x minus six x? One x minus 10. So we brought our constant, sorry, sorry. We brought our variable term over to the right. What are we gonna bring over to the left? So this constant term, sorry, sorry, dang it. I keep messing this up. This variable term got brought over to the right so now we're going to take this constant term, negative 10, and bring it over to the left. What's the inverse of negative 10? Positive 10. Positive 10. And 1 plus 10 leaves us with 11 equals x. If you prefer to switch it around and write x equals 11, that's fine. They're the same exact answer. Though. Let me get x is equal to 11. Now we're going to take this one small step further. We're going to answer the question, what is the measure of these angles? Right? We know what x is, but 
these angles aren't 11 degrees, we have to figure out what the actual measures of these angles are. So what we can do is we can take 7x minus 10, replace x with the x that we just found, which is 11. We'll move this down a bit so you can see if you're in the back. We just take either one of the expressions. Remember, if our expressions are congruent or our angles are congruent, it doesn't matter which one we use. We're just going to replace that variable x with the x that we found and then simplify. So 7 times 11 gives us 77. And then what's 77 minus 10? 67 degrees. That's right. Now we actually do have to put degrees when we're defining what an angle measure is. But we don't need degrees when we're talking about what x is equal to. What questions can I answer about that? Quick show of thumbs. Is that making a little bit of sense? I know I don't have the same energy that I normally do. I apologize, but does that make a little bit of sense? Okay. If you need help, don't worry. We've got plenty of time to work on worksheet 72. It's kind of long, so we're going to need a lot of time.